Hey, it's Dave. Welcome back to my channel. So today, I want to discuss with you some music theory. Now, um, along my travels, and especially as of lately, I've run across a bunch of people who claim to either read some music, or some can even actually read music, but they don't really have an understanding of what it means or they don't know how to apply it. And back when I was, God, I wanna say I must have been like 16, I'd been playing guitar for like three years and um, we were doing music theory in high school with the teacher. And he started comparing scales and asking what the difference was and I couldn't wrap my head around why we were doing it. I just thought it was a waste of time. It was like, what's the difference between C major and C minor? And I was like, well, it didn't make sense to me because I had been learning music on my own and C minor was in the key of E flat. So I was like, it's two different keys. What do you mean, what's the difference? Yes, when you get to the third, you're going to have a flat third. And he was like, yes, yes, that's what he wanted to know. And I'm like, well, that's stupid. It's... uh you're making it more confusing than it is. And probably like I am right now. So I'm going to show you a couple of things that you should know, and then we're gonna apply it to the circle of fifths. Now the circle of fifths is just the, it's like the wheel, you'll see it, and I'll show a picture of it here. And that basically shows you the different keys and how it works. And it's in fifths, so. The first key with no sharps and no flats is C. Then you go to one sharp, you go to the fifth of C, it's G. It has one sharp, you go to the fifth of G, it's D. It has two sharps, you go to the fifth of D, it's A. It has three sharps, you go to the fifth of A, it's E. It has four sharps. You go to the fifth of E, it's B. You have five sharps, and so on and so on. And before you know it, everybody has great smelling here from Vidal Sassoon. So what happens is that can all get confusing and we can build on that and we will but not right this second the first thing i want to explain to you is you have a guitar or you have your bass in front of you and you're playing and you know the notes on the on the fretboard if you don't know the notes on the fretboard before you watch this learn them you're going to want to know what the notes on the fretboard are each fret indicates a half step so when i'm done speaking or when you're done f learning this you'll understand why sometimes you call a g sharp a g sharp and why sometimes it's called an a flat so getting back there are seven notes in every diatonic scale in every key, I should say. You can add color notes and make it an eight note scale. There's a bebop scale that has eight notes, but that's not important. Every key has seven notes. They also have seven chords that can be built upon. So you can have endless chords, but basically there's seven chords. So in Western music, we have like the do, re, mi scale, which is basically, uh, one through seven with do you know brings you back to one so at the end it's so it's like one two three four five six seven one so you have this thing that's numbered and you can just number them because calling them do re mi doesn't work so if we number them and now we're going to start with the key that has no sharps and no flats and that key is the key of c so those notes would be c d e f g a b c C's on each end, it's still the one. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. So those are the seven notes in that key. So if you're playing a solo or you're doing something, those would be your guideline, those are your seven notes. It's also the seven chords. Now the chords work like this. The one, four, and five are always major. The two, three, and six are minor and the seven is diminished. So that looks like this. 
In the key of C, we have C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, or half diminished if you add all if you go to the extensions. But for the most part, the B D F, we can call it a B minor flat five. Most of the times I'll call it a B minor flat five. I won't call something diminished until it's a diminished seventh, which we'll talk about later. And later I mean two years from now. I'm just kidding. Um so those are your seven chords. I don't care what order they're in. If those chords are in the song, that's your key. So in other words, if we're playing um, a progression like A minor to G to F back to G, you know, like Breakdown by um, Tom Petty or The End of Stairway to Heaven, that's in the key of C. Now you could say, oh, it's A minor. Yeah, it's the same. Uh, you can, it's all, A minor is basically the same as saying A Aeolian, which is the sixth mode, or it's the same as saying the key of C. For, for purposes of learning, it is the relative minor, the six, but I like calling everything by what the major is because then you only have one thing to memorize, the seven chords and the seven notes. So that technically is in the key of C. It doesn't matter if you're starting on A. Some guy will sit there and write a song and he'll play D minor, C to G. And then he'll sit there and say, oh, I wrote this, it's in D minor Dorian. It's in the key of C. D minor Dorian is also in the key of C. There's no need to come up with seven different modal names for what position you're starting on. It's stupid. If you're playing, if you want to start on the D and you play D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, we get it. There's no sharps, there's no flats, we're in C. You don't have to come up with a million names and different modal names just because you want to start on a different tone. I give people credit to say, yeah, you're smart enough and creative enough to come up with your own pattern, your own thing, and you can start on any damn, you want to start on F, it's just the key of C. Now people will call you, oh yeah, that's F Liddy and it has such a great sound. Yeah, or starting on the F in the key of C has a good sound, or starting on the four in any key has that sound. You don't have to come up with these names of mode names, it takes away from understanding and most people they study it they try to learn it and then never they can never apply it because I'll go to a gig and I'll mention a song and they'll be like and I'll tell them well it's in this and I can see the eyes glass over and it's just completely over their head and then they start saying they bring up a mode and I'm just like yeah we're done talking it's, it's stupid because I can talk in modes it's just it's not if I've already spoken to you and said hey we're playing in the key of C we're gonna center on G you don't need to try to figure out in your head that it's mixolydian. It doesn't make any sense. We're playing no sharps and no flats starting on G. Now, these chords in the key of C are also going to have extensions. So if we extend them out one note, we have C major 7, D minor 7, E minor 7, F major 7, G the five, seven. The dominant chord sits in the five, always. A minor seven and B half diminished, or B minor seven flat five. Now, it's important to understand, if you've, ever, if you've watched my Learning the Blues video, if we're playing a G7 chord and the song starts in G7, don't look at me and tell me we're in the key of G. We are not in G. A G key, the key of G, has an F sharp. The G7 chord has an F natural, so we are not in the key of G. We are in the key of C. It's very important to understand, if a chord is a dominant 7 chord, it is the five of the scale. And that's very easy to understand. So, now I look at that when I'm 
teaching blues or even playing blues, if I'm playing a song like Stormy Monday in the first chords of G7, that first part of that solo, I'm playing in the key of C. I'm thinking C major in my head. Now I'm centering on that G, but I know that that F is natural. Now, the next chord goes to a C7 or a C9. Well, C9 and C7 is the same chord. It's anything that's based on the 7. It's not a major chord. It's a dominant chord. That's, so what is C, C7 or C9 the 5 of? It's the 5 of F. And so at that point, I then play F major. What's the difference between C major and F major? The B is now flat. So basically, if I'm playing still in the G position, but I'm thinking about it's the key of C, so I have an F natural. When it goes to the C9 chord, I'm now playing a G minor in the second position of F. I'm not changing positions. I'm still saying in G. That's because the beat is now flat. And it's the same notes. E is natural. All the notes are natural except for that B flat. When you get to the 5 chord, which would then be the D7, the D7 is the 5 of G major. I can then play in G major. I can play in G dominance, which is C major. I can play almost anything because the 5 in that position wants to resolve to the 1, and therefore any note that brings tension is tension and will resolve nicely. But for the most part, that is when you're truly in the key of G, is when that D7 chord plays if you're thinking about it as a map. So, to recap what I'm saying, the C major and the C scale, the C major scale, and every scale, the one chord is a, is a major or a major seven, the two is a minor or a minor seven, the three is a minor or a minor seven, the four is a major or a major seven, the five is a major or a dominant seven, the six is a minor or a minor seven, and the seventh is a diminished or a half diminished. Minor flat five or minor seven flat five. Now, the thing to remember now is the circle of fifths and how that works. So, uh, the way I teach my students when I'm teaching them face to face is insane. <laughs> it really is, but I try to teach them this way. So what I say is you're standing in a hallway. There's a door here and there's a door here. Now, through every door is a door on the other side and it keeps going but you need keys to get into this door over here would be my sharp keys so the reason why we call it the circle of fifths is you go to the fifth from c the hallway is neutral ground we're in switzerland this is the key of c no sharps no flats now over here we have the sharp keys first door is go to the circle of fifths is the five one, two, three, four, five, C, D, E, F, G. It's the key of G, but the door's locked. How do we get into the key of G? We go to the seventh tone of G and we sharp it. What is the seventh tone to G? Well, it's easy. Just come up with the note of what comes before G. F. We need an F sharp. So now we have an F sharp. We can open the door. In the key of G, we have one sharp. It's F sharp. Now, with one sharp, all those chords apply. We now have G or G major 7, A minor or A minor 7, B minor or B minor 7, uh, C or C major 7, D or D7, E or E minor, uh, e minor or E minor 7, and uh, F sharp uh, minor flat 5 F sharp diminished or you can call it uh, or F sharp half diminished or F sharp minus uh, 7 flat 5 but now you're, you're in that room 
If you want to come back to the hall, you get rid of the key. You don't need it. You want to go into another room, you always have to start. You can't go anywhere into the next room unless you're already in the key of G, so you already have the F sharp. So the next key that's going to have two sharps, you already know one of them because you have it in your hand. It's the F sharp. What's the five of G? G, A, B, C, D. It's D. So the next key is the key of D. And one of the sharps is F. What comes before D? What would be the seventh tone before the one? C sharp. F and C sharp. Now you have both keys when you get into the room of D. So if you look at a piece of sheet music and you see two sharps, you don't have to even look to see what the sharps are. You don't have to try to squint and see what line it's on. You automatically know it's F and C. It's in the key of D. That's it. All the chords apply. Same thing. D major, D major 7, E minor, E minor 7, F sharp minor, F sharp minor 7, G, G major 7, uh, A or A dominant 7 and so on and so forth it all continues on now that you're in the key of d you have two keys in you there's still another door what door is that d e f g a it's the key of a so now we're going to go in a you have two sharps you need one more sharp what sharp is it it's the seven tone it's the g sharp and this goes on and on. And eventually, you can go all the way full circle. That's why they call it the circle of fifths. However, um, let's go out one more door. After A, you have the key of E, and you have four sharps. You have F, C, G, and the fourth sharp would be D sharp that comes right before E. She should know all that. On this side we have your flat keys. Flat keys are much easier to remember. Instead of going to the five and sharpening the seven, we go to the four, we flat the four. So if we're back in the hallway, the key is C, and I want to go to the first flat key, you go to the four, and that's F. And what do we do? We flat the four in F. F, G, A, B. So now B is flat in the first flat key. We need a B flat. We get in. We're now in the key of F. Very easy to know what's ne what's next is because we're all dealing with fours. The next room would be B flat because that's the fourth of B of F that we just flatted, and now it's the fourth going in. What do we need? We flat the E. So now we have B flat and E flat in the key in the room of B flat. You want to get into the next room? You automatically know it's E flat. We just flatted it. We, flat e, we go to E flat, now we flat the A flat. So, if you looked at a piece of sheet music again, and you never, you barely can read, you don't even have to know how to read, but you just look and you see there's three flats in the, in the, before the meter or on the, at the head of the uh, page, you know it's in the key of E flat. These are the things you need to know. And then there's only seven notes. So if we're in the key of E flat and there's three flats, there are four naturals. If we're in the key of D and there are two sharps, F and C, there are five naturals. If you take like a look at, uh, and I'll do a, another a follow-up to this video where I'm holding a guitar and showing you some really cool licks once you understand the chord in the changes that go on but if we look at the key and i'll keep it simple well i mean i would show it to you in the key of e because i think that's the funnest for me because it's the open strings and um i love some of the tensions but for for our brains today not to explode let's take a look at the key of c if we look at the key of c and i play a g over it while the C chord is playing, I play an arpeggio of B, G, D. I'm really playing, even though I'm just thinking about it as a, like a, uh, and you can take it on the guitar, you can play like a D-shaped, you know, like a D-shaped chord, play it on the 7th fret. You'll see the B on the high E string, the G on the 2nd string, and the D on the 3rd string. What happens is you're going to see that's a G chord. But against a C, the B becomes a major 7, 
the G is the 5, and the D is a 9. So really, you're giving the tone of a major 9, even though you're just playing a G triad over the C. You're playing the 5. Now you can, see, you can go like, uh, and slide it down and go up. So in other words, we went down, we went uh, 1, 2, 3 on strings. Now keep that same D chord shape a whole step down on the F, on the 5th fret, and we have C, F, A. Well, the C is the 1, the F is the 4, or the 11, and the A is the 6. Of course, then we can slide down again. We have to change shape. But the point I'm trying to show you here is the colors that you're looking for in these tones are all in the seven chords against the root. Um, if we were to look at a scale of C, and, you know, in music we kind of look at it all the way up to 13. So we have, um, so like, you would have the, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You don't call it the 8. You call it the 1 again. And then the next after that on the octave is the 9. So that's the 9 is the same as the 2. The, the 10 you wouldn't really call it. It's still just the major third. And then after that you have the 11. Um, you wouldn't call it a 4 if the 3 is still in the chord or the 3 is implied. So therefore you would, you would just call it an 11. Uh, after the 11 would be 12, which we would still be the 5. You know, so, you know, you still call it the 5. And then the next is the 6, which you would call the 13. And you would only call it the 13 if the chord has a 7 in it. You wouldn't call it with a 6-7. In other words, if a chord is C and you wanted to play a, uh, C major 13, a C major 7 add 13 or a C major 13, you would play C, E, G, B. And then, well, if it's a true 13, it would have the 9, 11, 13 in it. If it's, uh, if you're playing, uh, if you're comping the chord yourself, to me, I would call that an add 13. Although the, and the jazz guys call it a 13, although they write it as an add 13, but they call it 13. But when you see it in parentheses, that tells you that it's an add. So it would be written as like C major 7. And then parentheses 13 would tell you to add that 13 in there. Add that, that, that 6 in the chord with the C, E, G, B. Now, I hope I'm not getting too ahead. And you can always stop, pause, go back and watch. But for the most part, uh, that's what you should do. And you should write them down. You should write down what I've said with the C, D, E, F, G, all the chords. And then see how the... And then write them in the circle of fifths and remember that that the key so when someone says to you were playing in the key of e fourth sharps f c g d you should know it that quickly hey the, uh you know if, if someone says like um hey this song's in a uh it's in a minor or it's in the key of c which means the same thing but they start on an f you don't have to sit there and go oh well it, it starts on f who cares it starts on the four of c so it's an F. Like you can have songs like uh, uh, like Keep On Loving You by Ario Speedwagon. You know, it starts on that F and then it goes to the G chord over the F. Uh, you should have C. And then it goes to the A minor with the F in the bass, which basically makes it an F major 7. But it's really playing around the C major scale. And then you think about it in C. Uh, and that's how you should think about it. You don't have to think about it. The first chord in a song is not necessarily the uh, the key. In fact, a lot of times it's not. And, you know, when you go to a jam and somebody says, oh, yeah, this is a blues. Now, you can say it's a blues in E. Everybody knows what you mean. Everybody understands when they say blues in E that that first chord is like an E7. Like that we're thinking that it's a major. But to me, that first, I think immediately I'm in the key of A because I go to the dominant. E7 is the dominant to A, and that's the key I'm thinking about. Even though they speak that way, but they don't know any better. Uh, some that do, uh, there are, and you're playing with people that just call it by the name by that name so it's like they don't want to rock the boat but for the most part like a blues in e is somebody telling you it's a dominant e which tells you it's the key of a because e7 is the five of a 
anyways, this video can go on forever, and I am going to make many parts to this. We're going to go deeper and deeper. But for the most part, I want to make sure that you're caught up on this so that we understand, number one, how we get the different keys. Think about those rooms, even though I know it's nuts, but that's how it works. And in the same respect, that's how chord building works. If you have a C7, which is a dominant chord in the key of F, you have, why is it in the key of F? Because it's the five of F. The C7 is the fifth chord in the key of F. If we have that C7, we have C, E, G, B flat, four notes. If we have a C9, we have C, E, G, B flat, D. You have to take in, when it has a nine, it has a seven. If it says C9, it has a seven. If it says C11, it has a seven and a nine. If it says C13, it has a seven, nine, and 11. Now, if you wanted to play a chord that had a C, you wanted to, you're writing something and it has a C, a C7 at 11, there's no nine. If you want to omit the, uh, the seven and you want the nine only you would call it a c add nine if you wanted uh, a uh, a nine and eleven with no seven you would call it a c add nine eleven if you wanted a 13 but you didn't want the nine or the 11 you would call it a c7 add 13 it, a, the, the seven if, if, if a chord is like above a 7 and it's a, like a 9 or an 11, it has the notes below it as well. That's the rule. That's chord building. I hope this helps some. This is going to be part one. Um, and um, you can post some questions if you want, if you have some questions on this topic. I just hope this helps. Learn the fingerboard. Learn your music. Um, it was funny, I, I always see like um, this guy, Phil McKnight, always writes this thing, know your gear. And I'm like, who gives a shit? Like, play your gear. Know how to play. Like, knowing your gear is not the most important thing. I used to deal with a lot of pro guitar players who were monsters. They would come in and be like, yeah, I like that. I, I don't know, my tech comes and gets that. You know, if you want to be a tech, know the gear. The music is far more important to know understand the music and understand the language and speak the language now obviously this is just one portion of it this is learning the the notes wise and of course we can get into timing and all that stuff as well there's a lot of different facets but the most important thing is to understand is what key you're playing in and what the notes are so in other words if we were to look down that hall again that door and i wanted to take you to the b room which is after e it has five sharps, F, C, G, D, A. So when I tell somebody that I'm in the key of, of B and they look at my fingers and they go, oh, you're playing an A flat, I know they're completely playing in the dark. And if you're playing in the dark, you are doing a hundred times more the work of memorization. I don't have to remember shit. When people like ask me, how are you learning so many songs? Uh, it's really that, I mean, I can understand. But I know the changes and I know what key I'm in, so I only have a few chords that I have to choose from. I already know and I can hear them in my head. But when you're playing in the blind, you have an unlimited amount of things that it could possibly be because you have no effing idea what the hell's going on. You think the G sharp is an A flat. Well, it's not an A flat. And if you think it's an A flat, you it, the, the, it, it's all just sh uh, a shot in the dark. You have to then memorize every song. And that would be nuts. I mean, that would be insane. I, you know, you have to understand that if I'm playing, like if someone says to me, we're going to play breakdown, and I know it's in the key of C. So when I go to that A minor to G, I know it's going F to G. I can hear it, and I know the changes. I can, I mean, what, where else is it going to go from G? It's going down a whole step. I can hear it. You can figure it all out. And uh, anyways, I hope this helps. This is just the start. We're scratching the surface. Um, thanks so much for all the subscribers. Um, if anybody wants private lessons um, with Sylvia Crystal on videotape, I think I have that somewhere. No, I'm just kidding. It's a great movie, though. That goes to show you my age when that movie came out. That was like the big coming-of-age movie, Private Lessons. 
Uh, and then I think they came up with a knockoff shortly after my tutor. Anyways, if you want private lessons, I do them on Skype. I can do them on FaceTime on my iPad. A couple of lessons today, celebrating a friend's birthday tonight. And uh, that's about it that's going on. Very good. And you are a liar. Be careful, Matthew. You don't know as much as you think you do. Keep going, baby. It's working. You whisper in their ears, kill. You whisper in mine, be afraid. You talked an entire church full of people into doing absolutely nothing. Uh, I'm no meteorologist, but I'm pretty sure it's raining bitches. You're right on target. You're right on the money. Everything you said. You hit the nail right on the head with your comments, what you're saying today. You're 150% correct.